What's up guys? So today's video we are talking about off-season eating. Eating to get huge, eating to get big. Uh, you know, this is something I get asked about a lot. Uh, a lot of you younger guys and even some more your you advanced guys, um, you know, come to me with a lot of questions regarding this on how to eat, what to eat. Um, everybody wants to get big, right? And it really comes down to calories in, calories out. So obviously we know that if we're trying to build lean muscle tissue, we need to be in a calorie surplus. I think where a lot of people go wrong with this, uh, especially guys in the off season, they get into this like bulk mode and they kind of think any food goes, like as long as I'm getting my calories and that's all that matters. And obviously uh, when it comes to getting big and gaining lean muscle tissue, we still need to take into consideration the foods that we're actually eating and making sure we're eating good quality nutritious foods to give our bodies what, what it needs to build muscle. Um, you know, as simple as we may want to break it down to to say that it's just calories in, calories out. And as long as I'm eating more calories than I'm burning, I'm just going to grow muscle, uh, you know, as long as I'm training. That's not the case. Um, obviously, depending on where the nutrients are come from, come from, it's going to affect our bodies in different ways. Uh, so we need to be very, very conscious of that. Um, so, yeah, it comes down to clean foods. Like I said, guys, uh, you know, a lot of people you know, don't want to really embrace that idea because it can be very difficult to eat five or six meals of clean food in copious amounts to make sure you're in a calorie surplus. Uh, I mean, the, the amounts of rice that you're eating can get ridiculous. Uh, you know, the amount of clean proteins like beef, chicken, fish, eggs, all those things um, uh, can, can definitely be tough to do that on a consistent basis. But, but honestly, that's what it takes, guys. Um, I think a habit a lot of guys get into and they kind of get into this like, uh, this, they end up spinning the wheels because of this is because they, they'll try this clean eating thing for a certain amount of time and then it becomes difficult and they might miss a meal or two. So then they're like, oh, you know what? I'll just go get a cheat meal instead. So instead of having my last two meals, I'll just get a cheat meal. And every now and then that's fine. Every now and then even I do that. But you really need to be able to get yourself back on track because what can happen is you can get, okay, so I go get a cheat meal for my last meal. Then the next morning, because I had such a big cheat meal, my digestion's all messed up, right? Because the cheat meal included some bad fats, some gluten, some dairy from some like cheese or something like that. And it caused inflammation in my digestive system. So now I wake up bloated. I don't want to eat my meals the next day. So I end up missing meals the next day. And then, oh, you know what? I missed a couple meals today. I'll get another cheat meal because it's just calories in, calories out, right? And then what happens is when you're consistently eating foods that have things like gluten, dairy, bad fats, grease, uh, they cause inflammation, like I said. And what happens then is if you constantly have inflammation in your gut and your digestive system, it makes it very hard for your body to assimilate the good nutrients you're eating as well, right? That inflammation is just gonna cause like, flare-ups in your digestional tract. And as your body is processing food and food is passing through you, your body absorbs nutrients from it, but it can't if it's inflamed all the time from, from making poor food choices. So that's why, even in the off season, even when we're trying to get big, taking your digestion of health is, is major guys. It's absolutely major. One thing for me, like when I figured out, you know, what foods work for me and I really narrowed my off season diet down to those and just stuck with those, it enabled me to eat a lot of calories. Uh, obviously my variety was very limited and that was a sacrifice I had to make, but it allowed me to eat the foods I needed. And because I digested them well, I absorbed all the nutrients from the foods I was eating and I was able to grow from that. So now that's not to say that you can't eat cheat meals ever. I think you just need to be strategic about your cheat meals and really kind of, you know, spread them out throughout the week so that if you do have one and you do have some type of digestional issue or digestional back from it, you can kind of get over it in a day, give yourself two, three, four days of clean eating before you have another one. And that's if cheat meals are even necessary for you. I mean, of course, we all want to go out every now and then and be social and have a meal, and that's fine. And that's something you should definitely schedule with your family, your girlfriend, whatever. It's necessary, right? We can't just eat clean all the time because it's going to kind of probably make us resent eating and then resent bodybuilding or whatever our goals are. So that's not what we want to do. But it's just something you need to be very, very mindful of. And even with cheat meals, guys, like make sure that you're picking foods that a cheat meal that you enjoy for sure, but something that's not going to mess you up completely. Like I know for my clients, I give most of my clients a cheat meal every week, depending on their progress and their goals, of course. Um, but I usually tell them to stay away from pizza because it's easy to eat a lot of it and it has a ton of cheese, ton of dairy on it. And a lot of times that can mess someone's digestion up for two or three days. And that's almost like a whole week of progress that just goes out the window. And something else you need to be mindful too is like the calories in a cheat meal, right? 
I tend to just stick with like a burger and fries and like a couple cookies for dessert. Cause at least with the burger, you're getting some good beef and with the fries, it's just potatoes. So some decently like good carbohydrates there as well. And it's not gonna affect digestion too much. And it's not gonna be an incredible amount of calories. If you sit down and eat a full pizza and then have some dessert too, that could be like a 3000 calorie meal. If you were only in a two or 300 calorie deficit every day of that week to reach your goal, for example, if we're doing weight loss in this situation, and then you eat that pizza, I mean, that's gonna take you way out of your goal, right? But even so, flip that back to off season, um, you know, we're trying to eat in a two or 300 calorie surplus every day to gain muscle, and we're trying to only gain a half pound or a pound, pound a week because then we know we're gaining lean muscle tissue. If we get excessive on the cheat meals and they start making our weight go up three or four or five pounds at a time, then we're gaining too fast and then you're gonna gain body fat, right? So that's the other thing we have to be mindful uh, when it comes to eating in the off season is how fast we're actually gaining weight, right? You can only gain muscle at a, at a certain speed, at a certain rate. And the longer you do this for, the longer you body build for or train for, the harder it gets to gain each pound of muscle. Trust me, I know. <laughs> Uh, you go from gaining 20 to 25 pounds in your first year or two of, of training, and then you go, you know, a good year of muscle gain, you know, for, for me now would be like five to 10 pounds. And that's like, if everything is perfect, my diet's spot on, training is good, no injuries, all that stuff, right? So yeah, you need to be, you know, very mindful of how fast you're gaining weight for sure. So, you know, if you're going up half pound, pound a week, that's good. Once the weight stalls, add in some more clean food to your clean structured diet that we talked about that's full of whole foods, right? Add more rice, you know, and you know, if you start maxing on the carbohydrates and you can't eat any more rice or oats or potatoes or clean carbs, then that's probably when it's a good idea to start introducing some more healthy fats. But just because we're trying to make our calories more dense doesn't mean we have to do it with garbage food, right? We can easily add some peanut butter to our meals. We can add, you know, a tablespoon or two of olive oil to our meals. We can add avocados to our meals. These healthy fat sources that are gonna be dense form of calories, but still healthy fats that our body can take and use to build muscle that won't negatively affect our digestion, right? So that pretty much covers everything I wanted to talk about in off-season eating. But if you guys want me to go in more depth on this than I did, drop a comment below and say so. And any other topics you guys want me to cover, just let me know and I'd be happy to do that for you. So yeah, guys, if you like this video and found it informative, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and we'll see you on the next one.